a very good morning to all first of all i would like to thank respected dr vk kapoor sir for his kind gesture uh, to allow me to speak on the topic of pain management pain as we know is a very common problem which a patient encounters and uh, we as clinicians face it from day to day practice so what we are going to discuss in this lecture a brief outline i am telling you we will go through the definition of pain how to classify and assess the pain what is the who step ladder for pain management what are the interventional pain management techniques which we are using and what is the importance of pain management in gi patients in gi surgery and then finally we will conclude our lecture so this is how big pain is and this is how we pain physicians feel when we encounter the pain because pain is really a very complex problem having lots of issues and uh, it's definitely a challenge to relieve patient from his suffering of pain what is pain actually the pain term was introduced in 12, uh, 1297 and it is derived from the greek word poena which means penalty or punishment so pain means punishment patient feels punished and pain is as old as mankind yet it is still mysterious the indian association of study of pain defines pain as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience which is associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage means pain is pain is not only a physical pain it is also a sensory and it is also an emotional experience of the patient pain is complex physical and emotional experience not a simple sensation and what is pain actually pain is what a patient says hurt whenever a patient says hurt we have to believe him we don't have to impose that no you are not having pain you are just feeling it it's on in your mind that is a wrong perception we always have to believe because pain might not be because of an actual injury it might be because of any emotional experience because uh, even post surgery the pain is definitely also there but it is also associated with the emotional experience of a disease which is uh, underlying the patient so this is the global prevalence of pain the incidence of pain is about 26% the diabetes is 7% coronary heart disease and stroke is 6% and cancer is 0.4% pain burden in clinical practice why we should discuss about pain this is a very important thing the pain was already there now why we are today discussing about it because majority of patients who are coming to our clinic they have pain as their major complaint they don't tell us what disease they are having they tell us that they are having pain pain remains poorly understood complex multi dimensional symptom with biologic psychological and social components and it is the number one reason seeking the healthcare there is a tremendous scope for research and trial of new pharmacological agents in pain management there are many comprehensive diagnostic and therapeutic cures which can be provided to patients with chronic pain the pain clinics or pain management centers are now becoming a common uh, we can see in aims delhi in sgpgi chandigarh in mahatma gandhi now in tata memorial there are dedicated pain clinics pain management centers which are dealing with the patients what are the common pain syndromes which we see in pain clinic there are neuropathic pain syndrome musculoskeletal pains central pains cancer pains chronic pelvic pain <laughs> and unusual pain conditions in hiv patients pediatric and geriatric patients how we manage chronic pain we should always adopt a holistic approach multimodal pain management must multidisciplinary approach should be there there should always be a protocol based strategy it's it should not be like i have given this medicine i am sitting in pain clinic and written everything anything which i want no there should be a protocol a decided protocol that how to proceed with pain interventional pain management is an important armamentarium 
in dealing with chronic pain. And we have to modify always our treatment as the patient responds. The pain treatment continues goes from least invasive like counseling, giving emotional support to most invasive like interventional techniques. Pain is now the fifth vital sign. It is adopted by American Board for Hospital Accreditation. What is pain? Pain is an unpleasant emotion, sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of cell damage. It is carried by unmyelinated, lightly myelinated A delta and unmyelinated C fibers. Now we will classify pain. Pain is of mostly of two types, acute pain and chronic pain. Acute pain, which is less than three months, it is mostly because of injury or nociception. And chronic pain, which is more than three months, it may be because of nociception, it may be because of other causes. Pain is also classified according to pathophysiology, nociceptive or neuropathic, etiology like arthritis or cancer pain, affected areas like headache or low back pain. Acute pain, mainly because of noxious stimulation, post-traumatic, post-operative, in GI surgery, obstetric pain, MI pain. Most acute pain is self-limited and they resolve with general medications. When this pain fails to resolve because of abnormal healing or inadequate treatment, then this begin becomes the chronic pain. Acute pain is of two types, somatic. Somatic is superficial and deep somatic. Superficial somatic, subcutaneous tissue, deep somatic, muscle tendons, joints. There is also visceral pain. Visceral pain is due to disease process or abnormal function which is involving an internal organ or its covering like pericardium, peritoneum. Chronic pain is the pain which persists beyond the usual course of acute disease. It's just not the three months criteria which we are taking for chronic pain. It is also if the usual course of acute disease is over and, this, and the pain is still persisting after that, then it can be said to as chronic pain. We have talked about nociceptive pain. It is because of activation or sensitization of peripheral nociceptors, which respond to noxious stimuli. And neuropathic is because of injury or abnormality of peripheral or central neural structure. Or the pain may be mixed, like in cancer pain. It is both nociceptive as well as neuropathic most of the times. Now, how we proceed? The pain management begins with history taking. Healing begins with history, an important saying. It is the cornerstone of acute pain diagnosis in medical history. Like, I will uh, just give an example, sir. Uh, I have encountered a patient about one month back, and he has jumped from the cliff of our because of pain in abdomen. The patient was carcinoma buccal mucosa patient, and uh, he, had, he had severe pain in abdomen. When the patient came to us in our clinic, uh, we inquired what happened. Then he told us that I was having such a severe acute pain that uh, I was not able to bear it and I jumped. He went to a government hospital for that nearby and uh, he was given all the medications, antidepressants and everything in the emergency department. And from there he was sent home. Next day, the relatives came to us. When I inquired about the history, the patient has now not passed motion for three days, four days, I think. So we had just given the patient anema and prescribed him laxatives. And he didn't even need it in simple tramadol after that. And this was the actual case which we encountered one month back. So that is the importance of history. Tech. Patient description of pain, like visceral pain, neurologic pain, history of trauma, surgery, or medical illness. It is a continuous pain or daily variation. Findings of earlier investigations, medical, psychiatric, social, other history is also important. Now, pain is how pain is assessed. Pain is assessed using pain scales. This is a numerical rating scale, which is classified from 0 to 10. We ask the patients to put a number on his pain that out of 1 to 10, how much pain you are feeling. 1 to 3 is mild, 4 to 6 is moderate, and 7 to 10 is severe. Also, there are other scales like visual analog scale in which patient sees the faces and then ticks over it. And there is also Wong Baker faces pain rating scale. Both are having images, visual analog scale and Wong Becker. The difference is in Wong Becker, we see the patient and then we put the marking after looking at the patient in pain. So now coming to interventions for pain management, these were the earlier and still prevalent some of the interventions which are done for back pain. 
so what is the importance of these uh, interventions because there is constant inflammation and irritations of nerve roots or nerves which can cause central sensitization and longer the duration of nerve root irritation more is the incidence of neuropathic pain like in this we are seeing l4 l5 disc protrusion this is the procedure epidural is given for the management of pain now this is who pain ladder who pain ladder is a three step ladder in which in first step we are giving non opioids like anesthetics ibuprofen paracetamol diclofenac along with adjuvants like gabapentin pregabalin if the pain is still persisting or increasing then we go for opioids for mild to moderate pain like tramadol or pepentadol along with non opioids and adjuvants if the pain is still persisting or increasing then we go for opioids for moderate to severe pain like morphine fentanyl and along with non opioids and adjuvants this who pain ladder is the basic of pain management it is meant for cancer pain but it can be used in any setting in any patient not only for cancer pain but it was built for cancer pain mainly interventional pain management goes with neural blockage but when we block the nerves why do we, we do for diagnostic blockage because sometimes the things are not evident even on mri but patient is saying that i am having pain so we have to give diagnostic blocks and we have to identify the pain generators that is this nerve or is the inflammation causing the pain then there is prognostic blockage we used to determine that if a de definitive procedure is indicated and there comes the therapeutic blockage in which what we do we do a series of blocks or we do chemical neurolysis or we do radio frequency ablation in conjugation with physical therapies so international pain management there are trigger these are the procedures which we are doing here we are doing trigger point injections we are doing celiac plexus blocks for our patient we have done in about 5 to 6 patients celiac plexus block with ca gallbladder ca pancreas we have done and we have achieved good results with that we are also doing intercostal nerve blocks which are very useful in uh, uh, ca lung patients epidural injections are cornerstone for management of any back pain we are also doing lidocaine infusions for chronic pain lidocaine is a local anesthetic and it is known to cause cardiovascular toxicity but we are using it in about uh, four times of the dose which is used in anesthesia routinely and uh, we do proper cardiac monitoring and hemodynamic monitoring when we do lidocaine infusions until now we have done about 80 to 100 lidocaine infusions for our patients and this has shown to reduce the intensity of neuropathic pain it is an uh, adjuvant therapy not a treatment therapy but yes it has been very effective for the pain relief in our patients and it is also very important in gastro surgery patients we will discuss it later transforaminal epidural technique recently we have done uh, in two patients last week and before that we have done in about uh, 25 to 30 patients <coughs> it is a very important technique because it relieves the inflammation on the nerve roots especially in cancer patients like uh, when the cancer is metastasized to vertebra or nerve roots it is causing lot of inflammation over there so we do do a targeted intervention we go to l4 nerve root or l5 nerve root whatever the neural dermatome is involved we deposit a dye there and we locate the nerve and then we deposit direct steroid injection over it it is a low dose injection and very targeted so it does not usually causes a lot of problems and till now both our patients they have reported uh, a uh, very good results so yesterday also i talked with one of our patient he has no burning sensation whatsoever which earlier he was having and because of that the patient was on morphine neurolytic blocks or rf fibrillation is done for trigeminal neuralgia ophthalmic division maxillary division mandibular division in ca cancer of buccal mucosa we are regularly doing it all our interventions are done under fluoroscopic guidance or ultrasonic guidance we can also do this procedure in uh, ct guidance apart from pharmacologic therapies and the interventional pain management there are also non pharmacologic interventions like music therapy aroma therapy art therapy acupuncture touch therapy these things seems less important 
but when we apply it to ourselves when we are in pain we watch tv or we do some destructive things we are relieved of pain in cancer patients these things are very useful adequate pain relief is essential not only for patient comfort but also for pulmonary toilet and wound healing in surgical patients pain is best relieved using a combination of pharmaceutical agents like opioid non opioids local anesthetic and analgesics the efficacy and addictive nature of nsaids is attractive but they must be tempered by recent evidence suggesting impaired bone growth with all such agents and increased potential for thrombotic cardiovascular events with cox2 inhibitors i have uh, taken certain uh, recommendations from a reputed journal it says that uh, uh, in level 2 pain the efficacy of pain medication regime must be constantly assessed and altered to achieve the intended effect for enteral opioid therapy a combination of sustained release formulation along with intermediate release formulation means uh, but it can be applied generally also whenever a patient is admitted to us we should give a sustained release and the longer acting medication if it is working fine it's okay if it is not working fine we should also give intermediate release tablets along with it so that the patient has complete pain relief during his hospital course an enteral pain medication should be started as early as if the patient is able to tolerate such medications cox2 inhibitor and non selective nsaid should be avoided because of high risk of thrombotic cardiovascular events nsaids and cox2 inhibitors should not be used in patients with renal dysfunction hypovolemia or active gi hemorrhage post operative pain continues to be a barrier to successful recovery and rehabilitation after surgery one study estimates that roughly 75% post operative patients experience moderate to severe post operative pain because of suboptimal analgesic therapy in addition to problems discovered while the patient remains in hospital delayed wound healing respiratory distress acute surgical pain is widely accepted as a risk factor for developing psychological distress and chronic post surgical pain preventive analgesia encompasses the use of various modalities before during and after surgery to minimize post operative pain analgesic therapy should be started before surgical incision for example pre operative epidural administration of local anesthetic and opioids or performance of nerve block to provide anesthesia and anatomical distribution of surgical procedure in fact such pre incision therapies have been shown to prevent the development of altered process of efferent neuron and pain input which would otherwise heighten the post operative pain this is one of the concepts of multimodal analgesia now when we are doing pancreatic or duodenectomy like whipple's procedure it is done to treat uh, all of you <laughs> all of us know that cancer tumor located in pancreas bile ducts and duodenum so what is happening <coughs> although there is wide variation among centers the procedure involves large abdominal incision which causes significant post operative pain so numerous studies have been done to study the effects of intravenous versus epidural anesthesia in such patients epidural catheters have been shown to provide better pain relief than iv analgesic medications and they have been associated with decreased risk of post operative pneumonia and insulin resistance while improving pulmonary function arterial oxygenation and decreased hospital time thoracic epidural anesthesia is uh, demonstrated to improve post operative pain in major abdominal surgeries and has also been associated with decreased post operative pneumonia and insulin resistance and this thoracic epidural has become a standard approach in all major centers to post operative pain control undergoing pancreatic and rajendra ji ji aap jahan pe hai wahan koi whatsapp wala phone hai kya standard approach to post operative pain control under pancreatic and other procedures if we are not giving thoracic epidural then what we can do we can do pain control by patient controlled analgesia in which intravenous opioid is given 
in incremental based on patient preferences. There is a button in it which we press and it delivers the desired opioid dose and it has a locking system so that overdose should never be administered to the patient. Another alternative which I uh, talked earlier, intravenous infusion of lidocaine. In a systemic review of eight trials, there was decrease in duration of ileus, length of post-operative stay, post-operative pain and post-operative nausea and vomiting with intravenous lidocaine infusion compared with TCA morphine pump. These intravenous lidocaine infusion, we can do intraoperatively, we can also do postoperatively. And under proper monitoring, they're relatively safe. Along with it, ultrasound guided transverse abdominis plane block have been shown to provide analgesia to anterior lateral abdominal bone. Also, catheter can be placed uh, through trans, uh, transverse abdominal screen block and it can provide analgesia even post-operative also, not, during, not only intraoperative. Surgical techniques utilized in pancreatic surgery, they have also impact on post-operative pain. Minimal invasive surgery has been desired method. It reduces post-operative pain, increases mobility, increases recovery rate, better cosmetic appearance. It is shown that hybrid laparoscopic assisted pancreatic duodenectomy has significantly lower blood loss, shorter hospital stay, and lower analgesic requirements. 12 patients which are undergoing laparoscopy procedures used an epidural for post-operative pain control as compared with uh, open pancreatic duodenum procedures. Mean seven-day analgesic requirements were lower who underwent uh, laparoscopic assisted procedures than underwent open procedures. In addition to medical and anesthetic variables contributing to post-operative pain, this novel less invasive surgical techniques also reduces the pain in pancreatic duodenectomy patients. Next is uh, hepatectomy. Hepatectomies involves wide upper abdominal incisions which are contributing to post-operative pain control and affecting the recovery time. The risk of coagulopathy after liver resections has made the placement of epidurals controversial in some patients. Although there are no cases of epidural hematoma which are linked to liver resection, catheters are often not removed before coagulation studies return to normal. So always whenever we are doing hepatectomy and epidural is in place, there should be a PTINR or coagulation studies before removing the epidural. Even after seven days post-operatively, PT may be prolonged as long as 22%. Further, seven to eight percent catheters dislodge spontaneously and 50% epidural hematoma may occur as a result of catheter removal. Another substitute of epidural analysis, intrathecal morphine. We can do it uh, preoperatively also. Uh, we directly deposit the morphine into intrathecal space and some studies have demonstrated adequate pain relief with intrathecal morphine and gabapentin compared with epidural analysis. Gabapentin is an adjuvant which is shown to reduce the incidence of intra and post-operative pain. How uh, and gabapentin and pregabalin both can be used along with this intrathecal morphine or epidurals. However, another analgesic modality like anesthetic or systemic opioids has made this result unclear. Interestingly, the patient treated with regime of intrathecal morphine and gabapentin pre and post-operatively were discharged four hours uh, earlier on average. But uh, two days, sorry, earlier than patients in epidural group. Another mortality utilized for post-operative pain control after hepatic surgery is infusion of local anesthetic via on-Q pump of the uh, I was unable to get its image, but I can tell you what it is. On-Q uh, pain buster is a, a filling device and it delivers the local anesthetic as a fixed rate. It is like an infusion pump uh, and it can also be used. The advantage is that... Uh, we can set the rate and uh, I don't think there is more of the advantage to it, but cost is the major factor and it is also not available. So we can use it. We cannot use it if we are having infusion pumps. The same thing, local anesthetic can be given by infusion pumps also, but this is also in practice in Western countries. In one study involving 48 patients scheduled for elective liver surgery, the treatment group received propivacaine 0.25% infusion at 4 ml per hour for 68 hours 
by two multi orifice indwelling catheter placed in musculofacial layer before skin closure along with morphine tca pump in a recent prospective randomized study 40 adult living live donors were assigned either intrathecal morphine with fentanyl or 0.5% tropivacaine by on cue pain buster placed at the wound while analgesia was less effective in first 12 hours with pain buster group compared with in later hours patients in pain buster groups have shorter bowel recovery time local anesthetic infusions through pain buster represents an alternative to epidural intravenous and intrathecal methods of post operative pain control after liver surgery then comes the gastric bypass surgery obese patients are more sensitive to respiratory depressant effects of opioids and are more likely to require post operative ventilation to avoid hypoxemic episodes they were placed on low dose ketamine infusions these ketamine infusions we are doing in neuropathic pain and difficult pain it can also be done in gastric bypass patients ketamine infusion is done at the dose of 1 mg per kg per minute with the remifentanil or propofol for gastric bypass procedures and it has shown to decrease pain scores morphine tca consumption and better hemodynamic stability than remifentanil and propofol alone laparoscopic procedures requires insufficient of abdomen with co2 one study has looked different values of intra abdominal pressures and when it is compared it has shown that the intra abdominal pressure has also over no impact on post operative pain how much you give it gets 8 12 or 14 it will not contribute to post operative pain in a study of 114 patients undergoing gastric bypass surgery for randomized into local anesthetic plus post operative tca versus epidural and post operative tca alone the authors demonstrated lower pain score in local and uh, in local anesthetic infiltration plus post operative tca when measured at 0 12 and 36 hours in post operative period therefore demonstrating a multimodal approach incorporating institutional local anesthetic to more conventional modalities like tca means we have to use a multimodal approach always that is better in polycystic polycystectomy patients one group investigated the feasibility of epidural analgesia for laparoscopic polycystectomy in a 20 patient cohort patient receiving epidural analgesia had lower pain scores on visual analog scale who are receiving general anesthesia and were able to discharge on the day of surgery patient with epidural and group have higher incidence of shoulder pain because of the irritation of phrenic nerve but less nausea and vomiting based on meta analysis of patient undergoing thoracic and abdominal surgery those who received epidural had an odd ratio of 0.4 for developing pneumonia when compared with parenteral oral and intramuscular opioids epidural also decreases the odds of prolonged ventilation and reintubation in addition odds of mi was also decreased in their study gabapentin is a gaba analog used in treatment of neuropathic pain it is shown to be used in post operative pain specifically in patients with laparoscopic polycystectomy In randomized control study, patients who are receiving gabapentin 300 mg two hours before laparoscopic polycystectomy, they were found to have lower post-operative pain and fentanyl requirements when compared with subjects which are receiving trametol. In a prospective trial, the patients were randomized into electrical surgery, elective surgery with conventional four-port laparoscopic or single-port laparoscopic polycystectomy. after surgery the post operative pain on visual analog score and analgesic use was measured and the single port has significantly lower pain score and analgesic use as compared to four port group those and also it is seen that those with gallbladder removal from umbilical port they had less pain after 24 hours finally another modality of surgical technique that has been studied in regard to post operative pain outcome is intraperitoneal administration of local anesthetic either during or after laparoscopic colecystectomy a meta analysis of intraperitoneal laparoscopic uh, col local anesthesia in colecystectomy on post operative abdominal pain reports a significant improvement of 50% of the cases and quicker discharge another procedure which is important to us is colectomy the utilization of epidural analgesia and colorectal surgery is controversial due to effects on post operative bowel function 
epidural analgesia invariably leads to increased fluid loading due to associated hypotension which appears to have an impact on bowel procedures one study demonstrated that increased length of stay in patients which receive higher amount of fluids during elective colon surgery gastric emptying was delayed for solids and liquids by 56 and 52 minutes respectively in the group who received liberal amount of fluid versus those who fluid restricted however in one study when patient receives intrathecal pain med which acts like nidoxyl like opioid hypotension developed but but was not managed with fluid but with inotropes these patients were compared to those who are not receiving intrathecal therapy and there was no dis, uh, difference in bowel function whether it is epidural or intrathecal there was no difference in uh, bowel function and post operative complications yes sir appendectomy conventional laparoscopic appendectomies are performed using 10 mm ports there has been recent increase in use of smaller uh, laparoscopic ports like 5 and 2 mm sizes the smaller ports have less post operative pain but they limit the co2 flow and lessen ability to coagulate single port single incision obviously less pain and conventional laparoscopy three ports have longer operative time and less desirable peri operative outcomes conclusion post operative pain is widely considered a public health concern poorly managed post operative pain can lead to suffering in immediate post operative period but also development of psycho, uh, psychosocial distress and chronic post surgical pain surgeries of gi tract present unique challenges surgical techniques the necessity of larger incisions possibility of surgery related delays complicates both prevention and management of pain based on available evidence it is clear both surgical and analgesic variables may impact pain control and there is consistent evidence supporting the use of less invasive surgical manipulation and utilization of epidural analgesia for certain gi procedures and the conclusion is we should always use multimodal analgesia not stick to a single agent for pain relief the role of multimodal analgesia means various techniques used at once with medications with interventions we can do intraperitoneal installation of local anesthetic we can give tablog we can give epidural we can use that together they optimize peri operative pain control in certain gi surgeries thank you it was a long discussion dr mipun actually uh, for this lecture i had specially requested uh, my former colleague uh, dr anil agrawal who was the chief of anesthesia dr anil can you please come in your video thank you Uh, to moderate uh, this session, so I will request the uh, uh, leading expert on uh, pain management. I will now request Dr. Anil to make a few comments and add uh, something. Dr. Anil, please. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Hope I am audible. Yes. Yes. Please. It was a nice to meet my one of the very old friends. Saraswat also is here. is in the audience uh, it was a, a nitin and nipun uh, you you had you have covered such a last vast topic in 30 or 40 minutes it is commendable touching upon acute pain uh, talking about chronic pain then uh, talking about who ladder and then matlab uh, part of palliative care also has been touched upon and then have taken specific surgical procedures and what steps to be done and with emphasis on multimodal analgesia so in that sense like i can say everything was presented and it is commendable job before i i have one or two comments minor comments and before i i share those with you i would like to know what is the group like these are surgical So, surgeons yes. uh, surgical students surgical students surgical students yes, yes. Uh, anybody from the anesthesia team there uh, no not today actually i i now realize that i should have called uh, our anesthesia colleague also but i thought not not a not a issue but the audience today is surgical okay fine and another thing was uh, i would like to know about the availability of narcotex in jaipur Yes, sir. It is available in our institute. Uh, there is often limited supply sometimes, but uh, we are having morphine, intravenous morphine, intravenous fentanyl, fentanyl patches, tablets. Everything is available. 
sometimes there are glaces in morphine tablet supply particularly but okay. mostly it is present sir okay. you have a palliative department as well pre prescribing oral tablets morphine yes sir we are prescribing sir okay. so in a gathering it is of the surgeons surgical gastroenterologist maybe i i could say so for from your perspective i would think the most and the foremost thing would be he how to manage acute post operative pain at post surgical pain a patient should be devoid of post surgical pain that should be our primary focus of, for today maybe or maybe in the subsequent meetings whenever you have a meeting or class on that and what we as a surgeon i would request from you all that demand, demand your anesthesiologists that your patient should be devoid of any pain in the perioperative period maybe in intra intraoperative that they, they must be taking care good care of the pain postoperatively also as nipun was saying so many procedures must be being done you must be following multimodal analgesia which is the thing to go for so that that must be followed and they must be followed there so if, if my basic idea is demand that your patients are pain free and once your patients are pain free in the post op i am sure your life also would be much easier as a surgeon surgeons and uh, and two or three basic points i would share with you you, you have, otherwise it will take a very very lot of time in this discussing a different different things like one and the first and the foremost thing which all of us should understand regarding the management of acute pain or chronic pain actually narcotics should not be avoided word is moving away from the narcotics so our agenda should be that either we don't use narcotics as it, or in case they are good drugs but in case they are needed they should be used in lower doses or minimal possible for the minimal possible is that clear number one and the reason for that is it, it has been seen it has been reported agar ek bar bhi aap kisi ko dete ho na aapko take that also might lead to addiction that lead, might lead to tolerance and another very important thing about narcotics are ki jo surgical response to surgery hota hai am i audible is there any glitch there Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Please go ahead, Anil. Is that okay? Should, yeah, yeah, should I continue? Fine. Yes, please. So basic hai ki response to surgery as we all surgeons know, know ki surgical stress bahut zada hota hai, uska response bahut severe hota hai. So their narcotics do not help. They do not even minimize the response to the surgical stress. So usefulness is not there. Similarly, and you must be must understand there are two types of pain one is static pain another is dynamic okay static pain jo rest pe pain ho raha that is static pain dynamic pain jo ki movement pe ho raha that is dynamic okay Man. so what happens is agar dynamic narcotics again do not address the dynamic pain and once the dynamic pain is not being addressed then you see that you can't ask your patients to move you can't ask your patients to expectorate so it doesn't help in it, there is no use of using narcotics they and more so they are associated with their own side effects nausea vomiting and so many other disorders so one basic thing is to understand that we have to move away from narcotics to to the jitna bhi move kar sakte hain how to do it nipun has very clearly said we have to move to the multimodal multimodal analgesia there are few points i would just you know where regional anesthesia is the best option to go in for maybe epidural they aapne aap you have highlighted epidural kai baar bahut jagah pe so that is the way to go forward epidurals ke apne hai issues agar epidurals aap log aur bhi zyada acha hai ki safer bhi hai field blocks aap use kar sakte hain aajkal sabse zyada aa raha facial pain blocks aa raha hai प्लेन ब्लॉक्स आते हैं जो आपने मेंशन भी किया था कि टायर ब्लॉक है रेक्टर स्पाइनिक ब्लॉक है रेक्टर शीट ब्लॉक है सो दीज आर वेरियस ब्लॉक्स जहां पे क्या आप ब्लॉक्स दे सकते हो कैथेटर प्लेस कर सकते हो यू कैन लीव देम फॉर लॉन्ग पीरियड्स ऑफ टाइम सो 
एंड जहां आप एज ए सर्जन यू कुड हेल्प एंड यू मस्ट इनकॉपरेट दैट इन्फिल्ट्रेशन लोकल इन्फिल्ट्रेशन एट दर्जिकल साइट एट द एंड ऑफ सर्जरी इट ऑल्सो हेल्प इक्वली इट इज वेरी इफेक्टिव so yeah, these are some of the things which have to be taken care or in mein in jo main procedures bata raha hu regional anesthesia yes wheel blocks in mein fayda kya hai ki sab fayda hai dynamic pain ko bahut acha control karta hai response to surgical stress ko bahut acha karta hai so the we, we should go for that there is all at the moment I, uh, I have a few questions before the students come in. If uh, any student wants to ask anything, uh, one is uh, you mentioned briefly about the pre-incision. Yes. Sir. Uh, can you elaborate on that? That uh, how useful or helpful it is. The sir, pre-incision. It is very important, sir, to start preemptive analgesia, which we say. If we control the pain uh, before it begins. if we uh, block the nerves then it will reduce the incidence of intraoperative as well as postoperative pain and it will also decrease the analgesic requirements intraoperatively as well as postoperatively which will decrease the length of hospital stay uh, which will decrease the incidence of pulmonary complications and uh, respiratory problems everything sir uh, pre incisional like we are giving adjuvant gabapentin pre gabalin these are non invasive simple tablets are available they are extensively studied sir they are approved and they are widely used in foreign countries also as a preemptive analgesic technique second thing pre incision is as we are going towards multimodal approach like sir has elaborated also facial plane blocks like transverse abdominis pain plane block which we discussed erector spinae block if these blocks are in place before sir actually what happens uh, we all know sir sometimes when general anesthesia is not possible we used to give blocks and do the surgery so if in blocks we are doing a, uh, some people are doing hernia also so if we are giving these blocks and even they are to 50% of the advantage or 40% 30% advantage then it is a huge advantage for patient in post operative recovery along with it like intravenous lignocaine infusion intraoperatively we are using propofol infusion why not mix ketamine with it if patient has stable cardiopulmonary status and these things can add on the analgesia along with epidural and uh, they will not add to any post op morbidity or distress these are relatively safer procedures which anesthetists do literally every day it's just incorporating them into practice once the patient goes uh, into the post operative pain and if the incidence is even reduced by 40% or 50% the hospital stay will be reduced patient will recover quickly so this is how sir pre incision analgesic techniques are of advantage are we using any pre incision oral or injectable no sir no but sir these are not uh, uh, expensive expensive sir a simple gabapentin tablet was 12 12 rupees a single dose of gabapentin i think i should have called ganesh also in this session i called okay so maybe we will a gabapentin tablet Yeah, Dr. Anil, please. Nepal, you have rightly mentioned about preemptive analgesia. Yes, sir. But this me, throw us a add on. Karna hai ki preemptive analgesia jab aaya tha na, tab it was in the Ram Bhan ki tarah lete the ki kahi pe bhi de do, kuch bhi karoge, it was good, acha hai, acha hai, acha hai, bahut acha hai. But over a period of time, preemptive analgesia has gone down. Ab ab usko follow nahi karte hain, and the reason for that is. प्रीएम्प्टिव एनालिसिया में आप एक एक स्टेप करते हो आपने एक प्रोसीजर किया कुछ सीजन से पहले किया उसकी एफिकेसी छह घंटे आठ घंटे चौबीस घंटे वोट एवर होगी एंड इट गोज ऑन सो नाउ द कंसेप्ट इज दे हैव मूव फ्रॉम प्रीएम्प्टिव टू प्रीवेंटिव एनालिसिया ये प्रीवेंटिव है ना सो एंड दैट एनकंपासेस प्रीऑपरेटिव इंटरऑपरेटिव ए it's just not sir before. what about the the uh, pre port incision uh, that uh, uh, no not tap no, no. just at the port side the port side the port side pre or we are not using anything post to give low pediatric cataracts there is no cataracts so that is another thing which we need to talk to dr ganesh and see whether it will second is uh, for the sake of surgical students when you say pca patient controlled analgesia it could be both intravenous and epidural uh, yes sir 
it could be both. both. Okay. Now, third, uh, just a comment that as a surgeon, I would feel that epidural for lap coli probably may be an overkill uh, because uh, most of yes, the patients can be well controlled with less uh, invasive procedures. So, just an observation. Yes. Now, when you say multimodal, yes, do you mean multi drug or multiple? Multiple techniques. techniques. Multiple techniques. So can you can you specify? Suppose we are doing a large incision for say for hepatectomy or pancreatic duodenectomy. What would multimodal include? One, two, three, four. Sir, multimodal may include giving pre gabapentin or pre gabapentin before. Yeah, when if we are doing laparoscopically, giving at incision at, at the site of hope local anesthetic, we can do intraperitoneal installation of drug after the procedure is complete, and we are closing. We can do local anesthetic intraperitoneally. Before procedure, we can also do tab block or facial pain block and place an epidural catheter so that the patient is relieved of the pain post-operative. So that encompasses all the perioperative uh, preventive analgesia, yeah? preoperative, intraoperative, and post-operative. Okay. Sir, one second. Yeah. If we are not using this epidural analgesia yeah? in our surgical patients, yes, sir. what is the best post-operative analgesic we will give to our patients? But the combination of the best surgical or best uh, analgesic, we can... Sir, in this, we have to follow the analgesic. Uh, it depends so on we, the severity. We need to give either midline incision or right subcortical incision. So we need analgesics for this midline or right subcortical incision. What analgesic do we use? So facial pain blocks are very good, firstly. Okay. Uh, and if not relieved by facial pain block, because the pain is acute pain, it is a uh, post-operative pain. Initially, we will go to NSAIDs. Plus weaker opioids if necessary. NSAIDs like diclofenac and weaker opioids like tramadol, etc. If still not relieved, then according to WHO step letter, we can go higher and we can use like uh, tepentadol also. And if not relieved, then fentanyl patch for acute period or uh, morphine tablet for acute period. Uh, we are not using some morphine tablet to be very honest. But yes, fentanyl patch uh, can be used for post-operative three days only. Can, can, our our protocol is to give the uh, analgesic tramadol and uh, PCM. We usually give tramadol PCM. But as I discussed with uh, the, uh, as you are saying, we, we should do diclofenac in, in place of tramadol. Uh, yes, and any NSAID. NSAID. So this step block, can it be given when we give a subcostal or a uh, transfer incision? It is given before. So before the incident, it is given before the incident. Not at the end of the. Yes, it before is given before. The anesthetic, anesthetic doctor. Yeah, doctor wants to. Yes, doctor Anil. Sir, most they can give. Bath may be they can give. Pelle bhi they can give. Koi sani post surgery. Ham log implants wagera karte hain, TKR karte hain, uske baad bhi lagate hain. So operator nerve block lagate hain, popliteal nerve blocks lagate hain. Lab poly may be tap de sakte hain, baab de sakte hain. But only thing is, actually it is not that much desired because these patients don't suffer that kind of pain. So baki multipodal karenge may be, is me exis basna dhyan rakhe ki, NSAIDs hum log baat nahi kar rahe, aapne baat kari hai ni. NS, kyoki in me kai me aisa hota hai ki we dynamic pain control hota ni, pain anti-inflammatory action bad jata hai. So that response, uh, who advantage to take a multimodal component of the NSAIDs, if the patient's kidneys are okay, then NSAIDs should be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Shastrath, please. Dr. Shastrath wants to say Sir, something. Two questions, sir. One is that, is the WHO pain ladder same for post-operative patients? Sir, it yes. is basically for cancer pain. Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm asking. What is the pain ladder for post-operative patients? So how do you progress with the analgesias for yeah. post-operative patients? That's First question. Second question is what sir has said is that for dynamic and static pain, are there difference? Is there a combination of medicines that is prescribed that takes care of a static and a dynamic pain and when to use them? And the third is which is the safest and said to use in the post operative periods? Okay. <laughs> sir, if we are talking about the post operative pain, then initially, I think NSAIDs, if patient is not having any cardiovascular complications, we should go for NSAIDs. NSAIDs, the safest is ibuprofen. If ibuprofen is uh, we are not using, then we can use other things also, like uh, diclofenac we can use, acetylophilac we can use. So same thing I will say again, uh, we will progress. WHO step letter can be used for other things also. We can use intravenous tramadol. Because it is acute pain, it will go away within two, three days. 
four days and uh, this is the approach we should keep for most of the patients if not relieved then we can go for uh, like sir has said post operative pain control we can then put a tab block if we have not put it at earlier we can do the tab block we can do the intravenous lidocaine infusion these all things are depends on the patient we have to see the patient at that time and analyze what how severe is the pain uh, if the patient is very, is in very severe pain it's better to give him an uh, infusion of fentanyl or fentanyl patch straight away rather than putting him on diclofenac and tramadol and then waiting for another day or two days till the patient has difficulty in breathing and he is laboring with breath so it all depends on after seeing the patient if if we see that the patient is having a moderate pain intensity scale of 4 to 6 we can go for diclofenac tramadol other thing if the patient is having such a severe pain it's better to go for straight away for anesthetics plus step 3 yes sir straight away go for step 3 and intervention at any point the dynamic static pain now is coming yeah dr anil uh, dynamic static pain would you like to make a comment yeah the two important things to remember हम लोग पैरासिटामोल की बात नहीं कर रहे हैं डॉक्टर सारस्वत ने जो बोला दैट वाज एब्सोल्युटली वेरी पर्टिनेंट क्वेश्चन ही पॉइंटेड आउट कि स्टेप किस ऑफ इसके स्टेप्स क्या है कि पेन के मैनेजमेंट में तो फर्स्ट एंड द फॉरमोस्ट थिंग टू अगर कोई फार्मेसी स्टार्ट करनी है कोई ड्रग स्टार्ट करनी है देन यू मस्ट स्टार्ट विद पैरासिटामोल पैरासिटामोल इज स्टार्टेड बिफोर द सर्जरी एंड इट इज द लास्ट ड्रग टू बी स्टॉप्ड आफ्टर सर्जरी फॉर द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ पेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट पेन एंड ऑन टॉप ऑफ इट यू कुड एड जितने भी इसको जो भी मेडिकेशन आप करेंगे बाद में एड करेंगे उसके टॉप पे करेंगे ऐसा नहीं होगा कि टेमोडोल दे दिया फिर बाद में पैरासिटामोल एंड खास करके लैब कोली की जैसी बात कर रहे थे लैब कोली में अगर आपने पैरासिटामोल इन्फ्यूजन प्री ऑपरेटिव भी दिया है और इंट्रा ऑपरेटिवली सिक्स आरली पोस्ट ऑपरेटिवली सिक्स आरली दे रहे हैं तो मोस्ट लाइकली यू पेशेंट कम्फर्टेबल एक चीज ये था दूसरा पॉइंट ये था फेंटेनल पैच अगेन इसको मतलब घाट मानने वाली बात बता फेंटेनिल पैच दीज आर नॉट टू बी यूज फॉर मैनेजमेंट ऑफ एक्यूट पेन इसको इसको मॉडिफाई देख लीजिएगा ट्राई कोशिश कीजिएगा मॉडिफाई करने के लिए सर्जिकल पेन जो होता है सर्जिकल पेन आ इस समय ज्यादा है इस समय आठ का वास हो सकता है आधे घंटे बाद हो सकता है दो का वास हो कम कम हो डायनेमिक मूवमेंट हुआ पेन हुआ उसको डायनेमिक पेन था उसका दस का वास हो गया आपने फेंटेनल पैच लगा दिया उसको फेंटेनल पैच का असर आता है छह घंटे बाद आठ घंटे बाद उस समय उसको पेन ही नहीं है उस समय आप फेंटेनल दे रहे हो एक ड्रग एक्यूट पेन के लिए वो ड्रग दे रहे हो जो कि क्रॉनिक ऑनसेट डिलेड ऑनसेट की ड्रग इट डजेंट होल्ड ये दिस इज अगर एक पॉइंट आप आज कैरी करके जाते हो क्लास तो प्लीज कैरी थैंक यू कुछ भी नहीं है तो मॉर्फिन आई वी मॉर्फिन दीजिए आई वी मेडिकेशन देंगे ना एक ड्रग जो की छह घंटे बाद एक्ट करेगी तो देने का मतलब ही नहीं है उस समय क्या करेगी उस समय रेस्पेक्टिव डिप्रेशन करेगी पेशेंट को पेन है नहीं सर्जिकल डिपार्टमेंट शाश्वत सर इन यस सो वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क यू वॉज यू emphasize more i will take i will take you aap ko team mein puchta thank you thank you so much thank you bye bye nice meeting yeah so i mean doctor uh, uh, anil has pointed out that we need to avoid uh, opiates to to get away from opiates as far as early acute post operative is concerned so opiates basically only morphine or it also means uh, fentanyl and uh, tramadol dependadol all of them अगर आप हम देखें कि इंडिया में स्टिल देर उपयोग हो गया कंसल्टेंट हेजिटेट टू गिव मॉर्फिन अगर किसी को बोले कि मॉर्फिन दे रहे हैं देन द पीपल विल बी लाइक आदत पड़ जाएगी ये हो जाएगा बट सर द थिंग इज वी है इफ द पेशेंट इज इन पेन देर इज नो हार्म इन गिविंग इट इफ यू गिव इन अगर सर हम यूएस जाए यूके जाए There is the opioid phobia has been decreased. Yes, there is opioid epidemic there, 
इट इज ट्रू बट द पेशेंट को पेन से जब तक हम रिलीफ नहीं देंगे एवरीथिंग इज वर्थलेस अगर पेशेंट को आईवी ट्रेमेडोल आईवी डाइक्लोफिनाकिन से रिलीफ नहीं आ रहा गिव आईवी फेंटेनिल आईवी मॉर्फिन वंस एंड द ड्यूरेशन जो होता है सर 8 10 आवर्स का होता है फेंटेनिल पैच के असर आने का तब तक आईवी मॉर्फिन दे दें कुछ भी टैबलेट दे दें उसको बिकॉज़ सर ये फोबिया जब हमारे दिमाग से निकलेगा सबके तभी हम उसको यूज कर पाएंगे एंड मैंने जो पर्सनल सर अपनी प्रैक्टिस में देखा है अभी तक और दूसरे भी अपने सीनियर्स को देखा है सर ओपियोइड एडिक्शन कभी भी नहीं होता सर द पेशेंट हु इज इन पेन अगर कोई नॉर्मल बंदा लेगा तो उसको हो सकता है बट व्हेन अ पेशेंट इज पेन इट इज और ये बंद हो जाता है सर ऐसा नहीं है कि इट विल गो ऑन सो दिस फॉर एक्यूट पेन द प्रॉब्लम विद आई फुल्ली एग्री विद निपुण दिस दिस हंबक ऑफ डिपेंडेंस इज टोटली फॉल्स when we were a surgeons for a very long time as a general surgeon that was the best drug all post operatively only opioids were being given so what we're talking about is acute short duration yeah, post operative pain yeah that's what i'm saying dependence is primarily seen in people with chronic pancreatitis cancer pain yeah, no sir not in them the people who are Chronic taking it for addiction but not Chronic these people patient. Not these patients, sir. These and patients are actually having chronic pancreatitis. Patients that we have followed, yes, who have been given analgesics, are dependent on analgesics. Yes, sir. repeatedly we have come across that. So they are uh, having such a severe pain, like cancer patients are there. Uh, so they are developing the problem. Again, see, uh, I came to uh, PGI for the first GI surgery week, and doctor, uh, I still remember doctor Disuja took a special uh, uh, lecture on pain management in cancer patients, and he said, "What are you bothered about?" in a hospice uh, you have already uh, uh, stayed given up on the management of the patient That's so if the enough. patient is having pain in a cancer which is un- unmanageable and patient uh, and cancer has also gone to the that point is valid but yeah. what's the problem is that people who have relatively benign diseases and chronic pain yeah. for yes, example, example, example then, then, chronic then yes then, then, then no actually there are there are dependent. there are three so, groups of patients one is uh, acute post operative pain which is going to be there only for a few days yes, after no, that no. on its yeah. own it's going to finish so we want to take care of that second is chronic pain in a cancer patient whose survival is limited there we are not worried about yes. addiction third group is patients like chronic pancreatitis persistent backache or other conditions where patient is going to have a normal life span and uh, we need to be worried about yeah, the uh, uh, addiction so these are three different things. i have a disagree with one thing is that step up pattern for a who for the post operative pain the patient has a maximum pain in the post operative pain yes, yes. immediately after the surgery and that is the time you have to use the step maximum up pain drug definitely yeah definitely and then step down on day should be not even required by step up yes sir that so that, that is what step up step up ladder is not for post operative no it is not for sir second thing as we were discussing about the epidural in the laparoscopic surgery so we did this uh, study of around 45 patients uh, when we were doing a lot of bilateral at that time and we did for some lab pulleys as well at that time All those patients who have undergone epidural energies here for bariatric plus lab pulley had a wonderful, wonderful result. Post-operative post. So yes, I do that. It is a overkill for lab pulley, but if you are doing a laparoscopic procedure, <laughs> don't think that a simple painkiller will be very good. Always give them a sufficient amount of painkiller at that time. Third thing is regarding the local port site insertion of local anesthetic. We have stopped it because of shortage of time, because of running of patients, because we we just because that is the last thing to be done by residents. So we all run away. But I think that is again a very important thing for the especially for the lab poly patient. You have to insert at four points only that local anesthetic, and then the patient in the major post op has a very good result. One thing which I could not understand was your infusion of local anesthetic in the post-operative phase, continuous infusion. You told some infusion pump for the local. I could not understand that. How does it work, and is there a trick to do so it? So, like tablet or facial plane block is done. So, it is just attached to a syringe which is filled with local anesthetic. Infusion therapy. I've never heard about it. So, it has a surprise. Multiple catheters. Yes. Which goes along the way.
without that your little location you are never able to identify exactly whether you are correct or not so putting a catheter at that side and then removing the sonography pump and then moving the patient and then giving the infusion i have a lot of doubts about it whether it sir it gets destroyed. i don't know when you are saying it must be but i have uh, i have questions on yes, that yes sir we have never seen it sir isme uh, we have discussed that 50% sometimes it dislodges also and one more thing But about lab cole i would say that 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 the trend of giving a local intra peritoneal infusion of uh, local anesthetic in the peritoneal cavity no, is this no. one sir yeah, not, once, not not continue that once in, immediately after the surgery we used to give bignocaine no, as a local uh, in the peritoneal not in the peritoneal in cavity. the peritoneal cavity peritoneal cavity In the bit, uh, he told fifty percent of that has a good relief. Yes, sir. but that trend has again gone down. I don't know why that we are not using it. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, In the sense you give it, how long does each pain medication usually last? Sir, like morphine, X for four hours. So morphine is four hours. Yes. Sir, so so diclofenac about twelve hours, ten to twelve hours. Okay. Uh, paracetamol. Paracetamol is. Diclofenac how can it last for ten to twelve hours? Diclofenac loses KDS. If it loses KDS, it will last for six to eight hours, and then you have to repeat. Sir, eight to ten hours. Sir, eight to eight to ten hours. Sir, 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 Really? TDS. Really? Uh, in acute pain, but usually we give it twice a day. Acha. Chronic pain. For any chronic pain, you give it yes, TDS. Still give it TDS. Doctor, please give me TDS. TDS. PCM. PCM. We give TDS. PCM. Okay. Sir, do we need uh, any? I don't need any. Let me see what after. Paracetamol, sir. Six or four to six hours. And that's the shortest last. Tramadol. Tramadol, I think six to eight hours. Eight hours around. Therefore, do we need an add-on analysis after epidural analysis? Yes, sir. We need, sir. We should give what? What analysis will give? Any sites we can give, sir? We can. Paracetamol or anything? Whatever is required. Yeah. Epidural is not a hundred percent thing for pain relief. Just depending on the patient's muscle cutting and such. Yes, sir. Local local anesthetic is required. Local anesthetic is required. Yes, sir. 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 Local anesthetic is Uh, yeah, and just for the post op pain you know uh muscle cutting matlab jo choices are nsa uh, and metal nsa 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 okay i think uh, we should close it is already yeah, there yeah, is a opioids only because opioids are definitely for us it is still opioids and then de escalating because our he is saying is Give for doctor. Like what I said, give paracetamol to all. Do add NSAID. Do it. You know, we give tramadol and paracetamol sir. because we think paracetamol is the basic required and tramadol is the best painkiller. Yes, sir, so, in uh, acute post-operative pain, it's always better to go high. High top. Yeah. yeah. So then we give tramadol and then we come yeah. down yeah. every part. Take a few minutes. It starts to logic and that's how we uh, always post-operative pain. We always start with the top and then uh, reduce the because dose. Because it is acute post-surgical. WHO is for cancer pain, sir, and chronic pain. Okay, I think we need to close. There is a comment from Dr. Angelin, uh, which says the same thing. Uh, there is a comment from Dr. Angelin, which I have uh, projected on the screen about the opioid phobia. She feels that it was more uh, coming from the pharmacology rather than from the clinical pharmacist. The point which Dr. Nipun also made. Uh, Avinash, you want to say something? you come on the screen yes sir. unmute sir, yourself I, i want to know one comment from you and also the from the speaker about the huge of gaba pen in 300 mg 2 hour before the lap coli yes sir yes sir we can use it sir. you shared a study there in laparoscopic cholecystectomy gaba pen in 300 mg was given 2 hour before the laparoscopic cholecystectomy yes sir so the two question one it is a two hour before sometime sometime we don't want to give any liquids by mouth so another is put a hold on that that is one point i want to know second it is the only single dose that is sufficient to maintain the pain in a post op period or we need to repeat the another dose after the surgery as well no sir it is a part of entire uh, preventive intraoperative pain management protocol pre operative intra post it is only given pre operative and if we give single dose just in a teaspoon dissolving it 
it will not cause sir any aspiration okay okay, okay. It will be okay. high, hardly three four ml. Yeah. So once again, uh, all the attendants, uh, uh, please uh, identify yourself. I think Dr. Anand and Dr. Avinash have been requesting all of you so that we know who is attending. Uh, because as I said earlier, we are monitoring the attendance also. So please log in with your name. Otherwise, I am sorry. At some stage, we will have to take a harsh decision to uh, not allow you to join. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Nipun. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, also, Dr. Anil has left. But we would like to thank him also. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Avinash, once again for your technical support. Thank you. Yes, sir, one thing I would suggest if it is acute post operative severe pain, it's better to start IV diclofenac or paracetamol and fentanyl infusion right away. We should not.